Well, the waters that make up the deep circulation, as I said before, are identified by a characteristic temperature and salinity. And as it's defined here, a parcel of water, and it's usually, and there's no real firm and hard definition of this, but probably something larger than a swimming pool, uh, maybe on the order of a large lake, like one maybe one of the Great Lakes, uh, or even larger, water that has a fairly narrow range of temperature, fairly narrow range of salinity, that's called a water mass. Water masses may be composed of water types, and you don't hear water types too much in uh, oceanographic, in much oceanographic literature, maybe the scientific literature, you don't find it in textbooks that much, but when we talk about a water type, we're talking about a very specific single temperature and single salinity. And the distinction is really important for physical oceanographers for helping them to identify where different water comes from. And when we talk about, for example, North Atlantic deep water, it's composed of many different water types, some that form in the surface in the Arctic, some that form elsewhere, some that may be even partly composed of Gulf Stream water. Um, so when those water types get together and form a major water mass, the properties of that water mass are going to be um, influenced by the different kinds of water types. Again, that's probably more of a physical oceanographer's distinction, but something that's interesting and may be interesting to you as well. Water masses then are typically named according to where they originate. So if they originate in the North Atlantic, we call it a North Atlantic water mass. If they originate in the South Pacific, we call it a South Pacific water mass. We also name them according to where we find them. So if we find them at the surface, or at intermediate depths or deep in the ocean, we will call them surface waters or central waters or inter intermediate waters or bottom wa deep waters or bottom waters. Okay, so we name water masses both really according to their density, the layer that they occupy in the world ocean, and as to where they originate. If you take a look at Table 9-2 in the book, it gives you sort of five, actually six major categories of water masses in the world ocean. This last one here is really, um, in some sense, it's, it's new to me. Uh, it's new in the sense of it's gotten a lot more airplay um, recognition, let's put it that way, in the oceanographic community, at least beyond the physical oceanographers that have been studying these kinds of things. Uh, it's an additional one to ones that you typically find in oceanography textbooks. But these are the sort of categories of water masses found in the world ocean. Surface waters, of course, are the ones that occur at the surface. They're defined as waters that occur between the surface of the ocean and the depth of the permanent thermocline. That's a thermocline that always exists, and really it's that interface, a permanent thermocline, is really the difference between sort of surface circulation and deep circulation. Central water masses are found at the surface in the central gyres of the regional ocean. So even though this is a surface water mass, if we find a surface water mass in the center of the ocean, it has very distinct properties, and so it's called a central water mass. Intermediate water masses, not surprisingly, but really not, that doesn't give you much of an idea of what they are, they occur between the surface and the deep. Okay, intermediate water masses. Deep waters, are waters that occur deep, not surprisingly, near the bottom, not always at the bottom, but they occur near the bottom of the major ocean basins. During part of the year, they may also go up to the surface. So if you, again, go back to the meridional section of the oceans that we looked at in chapter 8, and remember that some of that cold water that we saw in the southern ocean actually went up to the surface, if you go back and look at those figures, you'll see what are called deep waters. And then, of course, bottom waters are ones that we find right at the bottom of the major ocean. And again, maybe at some part of the year, and really by definition, they have to go to from the surface to the bottom because all waters is essentially formed at the surface. So it gets its great density by being cold and, by, or, and or by being very salty. And if it's very cold, it's gonna sink down to the bottom. If it's very salty, it's gonna sink down to the bottom. So at some part of the year, that water mass, generally the winter, 
uh, that water mass is going to extend from the surface down to the bottom and then wend its way, wind its way, travel its way along the very bottom surface of the ocean. Oceanographers in, re in recent years, at least in recent years to my knowledge, have also now described what are called mode waters. Um, they aren't necessarily completely homogeneous, but um, they have a sort of, uh, they occupy major parts of the ocean. Um, they're generally the same kind of temperature and density over a broad range of depths. It's just kind of a different way of looking at water masses. Um, it's not so important, again, in terms of what we're doing here in this introductory oceanography course, but it is a word that's important to physical oceanographers and those of you that are going on to advanced physical oceanography classes to understand mode waters.